Yeah, I've looked at Daniel and you know, once the new staff gets in here, we're gonna get together, offense coordinator, head coach, the entire staff, dive into the film as a group and look at what Daniel does best. And we're gonna try to, you know, allow him to put his best foot forward. So again, I've looked at him. I, I know there's been, you know, I wasn't here in the past, so I don't exactly know, you know, what he was told to do, but I do know this. I know he's a great kid. He's been in this building the last two days. I've, I've talked to him. There's not anybody in this building that has said a bad word about his work ethic, passion, you know, desire to win. And I think you gotta have those traits as a quarterback. And the kid has physical ability. You know, he's got arm strength, he's athletic, he can run. So I'm really getting, I'm really excited to work with Daniel. And again, when the new staff gets in here, we'll build an offense around Daniel to accentuate what he does best. I want Joe and the uh, new head coach to make that evaluation. We do feel that Daniel can play. Um, you know, we've done everything possible to, to, to screw this kid up uh, since he's been here. We keep, keep changing coaches, keep changing offensive coordinators, keep changing offensive line coaches. You know, I take a lot of responsibility for that, but let's bring in the right group of coaches now and, and give him some continuity and try to rebuild the offensive line and then be able to make a, an intelligent uh, uh, evaluation of, of whether he can be the franchise quarterback or not. I have a lot of hope uh, in, in Daniel. I know how badly he wants it. I know how the players feel about him. So uh, we are certainly not giving up on him. This suits season in the NFL for the teams making new hires. When those new hires show up with a suit, with a tie, and it's always good news when the suit properly fits for a New York hire. Hopefully the suit will fit the new head coach as well. But, <laughs> yeah, I, 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 it, it's funny. We get back to the same rhythms and the same moments. I got no problem with the new GM wearing the suit for the press conference because every time we see a GM at a game in the luxury suite, that suit, that's the game day uniform. The game day uniform for the coach isn't a suit. It's so weird. They look so uncomfortable at that introductory press conference wearing a suit. Remember Adam Gase with the Jets? It was the last, he, he was like a kid that was forced to wear a suit to church on Easter. Like, get me out of this thing. But uh, Joe Shane, that's what, get used to seeing Joe Shane in a suit as the GM of the New York Giants. And uh, now they, they set about uh, getting a coach and addressing the quarterback position. But it sounds like price of admission to be the coach is to sign on to Danny Dimes sticking around. It sounds like they're willing to continue to work and work and work to try to get something out of their first round pick from 2019. It, it does sound like that. Mike, I think you've heard me, you know, echo these sentiments a little bit uh, the, that uh, he has loved Daniel Jones within the organization throughout. Everybody loves what Daniel Jones brings to the table. So he's got that working for him in, in, in his favor there. You know, the work ethic, there is talent. You know, he's got size. He's smart as hell. You know, he's a good leader and selfless that way. You know, I know it's not perfect, and there's still the fumbles and a little bit of that's going on. But, Mike, I mean, how many times have we discussed this year or, or you've heard me bring up and go, well, how do you really know what Daniel Jones is? That, that's what I want to say. You know, That's what I, I say to people on talk radio. I understand us questioning it, but – I don't look at it as a situation to where I just go, oh, I've seen enough. we got to throw him overboard and go somewhere else. No, I've seen some spots where I go, damn, like, you know, we're showing highlights of the Saints game where I go, big runs, big throws, phenomenal football. But, you know, again, at the end of the day, like I go back to one of my old sayings, when you're around crap, man, you're going to smell like crap and get some on you every now and then. And it's just hard. It's hard. How do you – new coaches, new system. Oh, another offense. Damn, I just got out of college. I'm doing this. What? We can't protect anybody. What? We have the worst offense in football ever since – I mean, offensive line in football ever since I became the quarterback. I mean, the worst. It's not even to the point where I feel bad for all of the coordinators who had to work there because it's just like, what do you want them to do? There's a part of the playbook they can't even dive into because the O-line can't do it. So that's where I think the Mara, you know, John Mara, the Mara family, you know, uh, the new GM, everybody, I think they're going to realize that when they break down film a lot of the times and they're going to look at it and go, well, 
damn, I don't know. I mean, if we had Aaron Rodgers, I don't know if things would have been a whole lot different. It's hard to succeed here right now. And I don't think they're going to you know, be too quick to, to throw him overboard. They invested a lot in him. He's a top 10 pick, and there's a lot of qualities they like. So I understand them kind of going forward here and giving it one more year. You know, I think this will be it, don't you? Do you think this will be it where they, they'll go, okay, we got enough pieces around you here, and now this new new generation of coaches or head coach and, and the GM will be able to evaluate it for what it is one more year and see if Daniel Jones can prove himself. Hey, Chris, it may be one more year, but the reality is when you listen to what was said yesterday by GM and owner, it sure sounds like they're going to pick up that option in May, which ties them – fully guaranteed why to another why? year man it it just it's but but That's because you gotta you gotta that. hang on but yeah. hang on yeah. hang on it, it, it just when you think of messaging and pr when you come out as strong as you came out for daniel jones yesterday it creates an expectation that it's not just one year and if you don't pick up the option it looks like what you said yesterday was bullcrap because if you really believe in the guy, you're not going to pass on the opportunity to lock him up for one more year. They, they better be ready to have a good explanation of why they didn't pick up the option for Daniel Jones. They got to harmonize it with what they said yesterday. And, and PR and messaging is a huge part of what these teams do. It, it is, 100%. And you're right, it's a delicate situation. But, man, to me, the risk-reward – it's just not worth it. I mean, you want your ass to get burned. I mean, that's a good way to do it. Let's let's commit to a quarterback we're not totally sure about two years down the road and plus twenty million dollars for him. I mean, damn, that'll put your team in a but tough spot. But they sounded spot. sure I yesterday. Know. But they You're sounded right. sure. That's the problem. Well, I would think that they can sell this to the fan base of, hey, we've been crappy. We haven't helped the guy. There's things we like. And we want, we're rooting for Daniel Jones to be the future here. We want him to be. But we got to see what it looks like first here with, you know, a little support around him. And I think the Giants fan base can get around that. I think the Giants fan base would be more disappointed if they went on and gave the fifth-year option. I think that's where they'd go, oh, man, here we go. You know, the Maras are running the organization, blah, 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 blah. I think that'll piss more Giants fans off than anything. So I do think there's some wiggle room here for them to kind of play both ends and the Giant fan and fan base kind of get behind it. Well, you know, there was an opportunity yesterday to create the appearance that the Maras aren't running the organization, and that would have been for John after the press conference because he wasn't up there at the podium. It would have been for John to say, today's about Joe. Joe's our general manager. I'll talk to you at some point down the road. I, I said that yesterday on PFTPM, and I've slept on it, and I believe it. If you want to create the impression that your fingerprints aren't all over everything, if that's part of what you're trying to do, yesterday isn't a day for the owner to talk. Yesterday's a day for the GM to run the show and let everybody know there's a new sheriff in town, and it's me. And uh, look at what, what Mara said about Deshaun Watson kind of upstaged what Joe Shane said about anything. Yeah. When he comes out and says, we're off the table for Deshaun Watson because of the sexual assault allegations. Oh, and salary cap. And I, that's one of my pet peeves. Look, if you want to make the salary cap work, you can make it work. Deshaun Watson's contract could easily be absorbed and restructured. They could, if they want him, they could get him. Salary cap's not the reason. The reason is, as we've said before, you don't want the back pages of the tabloids. Can you imagine? We said this within the past two weeks. Can you imagine how the media in New York would react to the arrival of Deshaun Watson. That's the reason why he's not going to be their quarterback. Oh, I, exactly right. I mean, the Giants got enough going on. You know, the, 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 and, and, and we talked about, I think, when we had this conversation last week, you know, they, they had the off-the-field issue with the kicker that certainly didn't look good on the, on the organization. But, yeah, you're, you're in danger of being, you know, a, a walking meme up here in the New York area or on the Daily News and, you know, the New York Post with – uh, you know, every headline in the world that's creative that goes around a masseuse or a massage parlor. I mean, that's where, yeah, that's not, that's where some teams aren't going to want to deal with that, let alone, you know, there's still legal issues unresolved. But there, I think he had to make this statement because there's too much talk up here about it. 
There is. Talk radio, the new sports pages up here. It has been too much Deshaun Watson. Would he come here? Maybe they'll make a play. I feel like ever since Brian Flores got in, in, in the conversation as far as being the head coach, that became a little bit of a jump-off spot here for the Giants fans in New York. And I think that's why he made that comment, to just squash it right now, get it over with. I mean, you're right. If they wanted to fit him in the salary cap, they certainly could. It's the other stuff that most teams are not going to want to deal with. And I don't think the Giants, as traditional as they are, uh, are going to want to deal with that right now either. So just to put a button on this, yeah. you're advocating that basically they take the Mitchell Trubisky approach that the Bears took, where we consciously, deliberately don't pick up the option. And if he has a great fourth year, good problem to have in 2023 franchise tag not all that much more than the fifth year option if we have to sign him to a contract we will right we're just not ready to make a 20 million dollar financial commitment until we see some progress it's it's still not going to be an easy no you're explanation right. and and i remember when the bears did it they hoped that people in the media would figure out and do it for them i think this is one where front and center they need to explain it because they need to harmonize that decision with what they said yesterday, or you're going to have people in the fan base who are very confused, saying they said all these great things about Daniel Jones, but he's only on the team for one more year. I don't understand. Yeah, I, it is. It's a dicey situation, but I, I, I do. Again, I think the Giant fan can realize, you know, what the situation is, definitely, and I think the Giants can explain it to go. We, we, we got a lot of qualities we like here. We're not sold that he's not the guy. In fact, we have more qualities that lead us to believe he's closer to a Phil Simms and an Eli Manning than, you know, being some guy who couldn't play quarterback here in New York. And, and I think that's where they're at a little bit. So they'll have to take it on the chin to a degree. But I also think they know the animal in which they're dealing with in Daniel Jones, too, and that he is a team guy and he's selfless and that he can also – understand the business, the optics of the situation, and not be too disturbed or annoyed that his fifth-year option wasn't you know, picked up. I do think that he's smart enough to realize the, the totality of what's going on here, and I think that's why you can get away with it if you're the New York Giants. And I think two other names to mention real quickly as it relates to other quarterbacks. One, they don't want to get themselves into a Ryan Tannehill situation where Daniel Jones goes somewhere else and becomes yes. a pretty damn good player. Right. And two, two, it's inescapable. The idea that I think the Giants believe that with the right supporting cast, maybe, just maybe, Daniel Jones can give us a little Josh Allen type of play I hear we've you. seen how he can run he can run we've seen what he can do if you give him the opportunity to grow it could be year three of Josh Allen in year four of Daniel Jones and I think that's what they want to try to harvest and that's what they want to try to engineer yeah I don't think you're crazy for that the, one of the things I've always heard from the coaching staffs there is like a little bit of like hey he's it's it's Tom Brady who's a good athlete. He can go. He makes. He's really smart and he can read things. But if we got to run read option or he gets out of the pocket, he can turn the corner and run for a forty yard gain. I mean, again, this is a special athlete running the football and was a weapon for them because they couldn't run the ball the traditional way. So they had to open up the run game by giving the ball to Daniel Jones. And man, come on! Over the last two years, right, Mike? I, again, correct me if I'm wrong. I mean, obviously, Lamar Jackson and Josh Allen are the two best runners in the sport. Kyler Murray, I think I'm going to put third now. Um, but uh, Daniel Jones is probably getting close to the next guy up on that list. We haven't seen too many other quarterbacks run for 40- and 50-yard gains more than Daniel Jones. Maybe I'm forgetting somebody out there, but I think he is towards the top of the NFL as far as that department's concerned. He doesn't do it often, but when he does it, it's very memorable. It's very effective, except when the 15-yard line <laughs> The turf monster. Drag you down to the, to the ground. Hi, I'm Mike Tirico, and thanks for watching. Make sure to hit subscribe for the latest news and highlights from NBC Sports.